Balaji Tele came out with their numbers. Their losses uh, for the quarter gone by stand at 27 crore rupees versus a comparable of 23 and a half roughly. The revenues as well have posted a downtick of roughly about 15%. So let's try and understand what led to this performance. And we've got on board with us a familiar face, Sunil Lilla, Group CEO at Balaji Telefilms joining us. Sunil, good to have you on the show. This is Thank the first time morning. I guess all of us are interviewing you in this Thank avatar. You so much. Uh, just looking at the financials, what would you say... Uh, attributed to this kind of a loss coming in the fact that it's coming higher this quarter i think it's an invest it's actually very much on par okay in terms of our plans this is the investment that we have made in our digital play which is alt which is scheduled to break even in three to four years and it's right on schedule uh june actually was a spectacular month for balaji we launched three prime time shows mm. uh never been never done that in the last eight years i suspect and nobody else in the industry has done it we continue to have a lion's share of 16% of GEC prime time viewing, which is really rock solid. Uh, and the movie business did really well. You know, Vire was a, was a big hit mm -hmm. for us. I, uh, one of the reasons we are seeing some of those financial numbers is because of phasing. One is because of alt. Two is because some of the TV shows came in only in June. So therefore, you see a, less, a, a, a slightly smaller upside in terms of revenues. Others we are bang on in terms of plans. So next quarter, this will be a positive, a bit of positive performance, you're saying? Uh, Alt will not allow the consolidators to be positive. It's an investment mode. It's, it's going to take three to four years. But the TV business and the movie business will cer are certainly are positive, even now as we speak. Uh, no, no Tanvir, I mean, markets are excited about your OTT business more than the traditional business. Yes. Uh, that's where, I guess, the real poster boy for everyone is Netflix. Uh, if Netflix can command that kind of an valuation, who could be the next Netflix of India? I guess that's the pitch which everyone is excited about. So how much have you invested in Alt? And when you say next three to four years, it will not make money. When do you think your investments will start phasing out? So we think after four years, when the investment starts returning, uh, when, the, when, the chai, when the business is profitable, the investment starts returning. What we are seeing is growth, right? One quarter back, we were at 1 million subscribers. June 30th, we closed at 2 million subscribers, right? So we are seeing growth in both subscribers as well as, therefore, in revenue. We are a paid service over there. We have more than 20 shows uh, which are original exclusives. Our positioning is a little different from others. It is about original ex exclusives. It's about Hindi drama at this point of time. It's available in multiple languages, which is in Bahasa, in, uh, in Tamil, in Telugu, mm -hmm. and soon to be in Arabic. So we offer the service of people being able to watch in dub languages, but it's principally targeting the Hindi heartland at this point of time. As we grow, we will grow the spectrum of our offering. But our focus is on building the core of our positioning, right? Is get people you, into the habit of binge watching. And we know so many of them, when a show goes up there, they finish watching, the, they finish streaming the whole night. Yeah. No, no, that indeed is the case. My question is not regarding the bottom line and the operating level performance, but the headline, you know, which is the revenue, which yeah. has seen a dip. Uh, your revenues from commission programs have come down. Uh, which I believe right now contributes significantly. Digital may have gone up, but that may be a small base. Yeah. So how are you looking at rebasing your revenue streams so that you know the dependence on commission revenues goes uh, reduces so that so, your overall uh, revenue comes up? So we have uh, it's a scheduling of programming. Mm -hmm. I think what broadcasters are now started doing is they use the IPL as a turnaround of the channels. Mm -hmm. So they take off of some shows and put nobody launched three shows yeah. mm -hmm. in a month, right? We did. Right? No other content house did. We did. Mm -hmm. So we facilitated three different big broadcasters to actually grow, uh, grow their offering. So it's a scheduling. I think it's more. It, it, this will get evened out over the next three quarters. Next quarter, you do we see on a year, on a year on year basis a growth in revenue? You foresee that? Yes, possibly by Q3, Q4, 100 um, percent. When I interacted with some of your predecessors, they were of the view that Balaji should not be in the movie business. And the vibes which we got earlier was that you were not looking at significantly ramping up the movie business, the film business, if I may use the word. Uh, there has a significant uptick in the film business. So what is the stated, stated strategy on the movie business? Are you committed there? We are committed there. Uh, we have kept aside a sum of money that we wish to invest in the movie business. It all returns back within the year. Uh, the way we work the movie business is that we do look at three or four movies at a time. We pre-sell the film, so we actually earn almost 60% of our cost back. The, the day we sell it and the balance we can easily make up in terms of box office. So we work with strategic partners to ensure that we can bring the revenue in. Our focus on movies is always to look at movies which are going to be smartly positioned, right? So if you see Vire, nobody thought Vire the Wedding would, you know, surpass uh, the results it has. 
It has four, four women in the lead. There was no strong male actor, completely antithesis to what is classic Bollywood formula, and it worked. So I think the pulse that Balaji has and that Ekta has over the Indian audience continues to rock. It will continue to but rock. Sunil, despite that, the movie business has been in hot and cold business for Balaji. Historically, yeah, yeah. there have been variety of issues, whether yeah. it's been a censor challenge or it's been a movie leakage. Uh, the investment in movie business from Balaji, I think it's a 10-year-old business. That's right. Uh, in last 10 years, it's not contributed this significantly. I mean, the properties what Balaji has created are fantastic. I mean, you know, we all are movie buffs and some of the movies we've personally enjoyed. But some of that is not gratified as real bo at bottom line level or top line level for a shareholder. See, I think if you look at the movie industry overall, it's always cyclical in nature, right? So our strategy going forward is that we limit our investment. We get a good return. We have a great return on capital on the money we put in over there. We do turn back the money fast enough and we work on a secure revenue base. As with this new strategy, I think it will allow us to take bigger projects, right? At that, at that point of time, the size of the business will grow. Yeah, but what about scale? Uh, what about the content deal with Reliance and Geo? I mean, how is that shaping up to uh, bring in the subscriber? So, uh, the relation, Reliance is an investor. It has 24.9% stake. It has two board seats. And they are a strategic supporter of the business as an investor. Mm -hmm. There is no specific thing that we have to do for Reliance Geo mm -hmm. that we don't do for any other of our telecom partners or other partners. Okay. Next three to five years, what's the vision for OTT? Considering, you know, that's the hot space and that's where maximum amount of competition is. So I think for the nature of content that we create, number one space like we are in television. Mm -hmm. uh, the OTT space is not getting competitive, but it is getting hyper competitive. Absolutely. Uh, you know, suddenly everyone thinks that, okay, content is the king and that's where everybody wants to really be present. So the Billas, accepting the Tata's, I guess all major groups have entered into it. Do you think cost of content now, generating good content and cost of content is going to be a challenge because you've got the Americans, like the Netflix and the you know, Amazons, which are going to be eyeing that space very, very smartly. See, globally, there's a shift between the cost that people are deploying in OTT versus in movies, okay. right? If you take China as an example, the, the content owners over there spend more money on the, con on the OTT space than yes. they spend on the movie yeah. space, right? In India, movies are still a big draw. Mm -hmm. We've been managing this business for 24 years. I think we know how to manage these content costs. Right? And th I think what's important is that if you really crafted your audience strategy well, you will create the content that goes home. And that's really important. So we do have 10 poles. We do have big stars. We do have big names, right? But we also know how to craft the story so that we can work with the large fraternity of stars we have over the... But can your three businesses coexist? Because uh, they are, in a sense, cannibalizing each other. Mm -hmm. The TV business, the movie business, and the OTT business. So the reality is that if you don't do it, somebody else will, okay. right? <laughs> so getting the, uh, the top sh uh, slot over there is much better than getting a top slot in only one, one place. Mm. Okay. So, <laughs> pleasure having you Thank on the you. show. Thank you so much. And I'm sure we'll chat again over the next quarter's performance.